All right. Um, so documentation. So um, we're talking about three main kinds of documentation. Uh, user documentation for how to use the software administrator or operator or whatever, you know, admin kinds of documentation for configuring typically, and then developer, um, which is primarily what I'll be talking about, um, which is the um, APIs and so forth that you want people to be using. Um, and uh, the reason I'm kind of focusing on the developer side is uh, the developer side can be um, largely automated, though uh, I found like the reference material you can automate, but then all of your tutorials and and um, examples and so forth have to be done by hand because uh, that's something that isn't, you know, the computer's not going to be able to just say, oh, well, this is how I put this these functions together to make it work because um, it doesn't have the necessary context. Um, so uh, we'll get into that. And then we have user and admin documentation as man pages and HTML files and markdown files and whatnot. And we usually do that by hand, um, but sometimes you you can you can do a little bit of it um, programmatically if 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 it's uh, you know common kinds of of uh, things. Let me I gotta take presenter back here. Uh, okay. So. Some basic goals when we're writing the software here is 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 uh, first to write software that doesn't need a lot of documentation because um, my experience uh, uh, programmers are, do not write good documentation. Uh, it's a stereotype, but it's uh, it's <laughs> it's a stereotype for a reason. Uh, I I do a lot of writing. Um, for standards and everything, and I try to do the best I can for documentation, but I know I'm not necessarily the best person to be writing uh, documentation for a particular thing because I have a very technical uh, viewpoint, and and while that's great for de developer documentation, it's not so great for um, teaching a less technical person how to use the software. So. You know, if, if you start off with making the software so it's as easy to use as possible, configures itself, and and very intuitive, um, that goes a long ways towards um, yeah, making it possible to just say, here's where you find the software, here's how you run it, and and you know, here's some common things that you will do with it, and and then they can be off and running, and and they don't need any more. Um, so you know that's kind of the first order of things is as long as the software is is easy to use um, and and can handle automatically configuring itself for most things, you don't need to do a lot of documentation and then uh, when you do have to do it, um, you need to make sure that it's uh, the documentation is easy to read and easy to access so uh, by access I mean uh, it needs to have a table of contents or an index or both. Uh, it could be searchable, um, but provide it in a format that either directly or indirectly gives the reader uh, the opportunity to, to find the information quickly and easily. Um, and of course, if you limit how much software you're writing, uh, that also uh, limits the amount of documentation that you have to write, and particularly uh, by hand. So that's kind of my goals for when I write software and, 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 and develop things. I try to keep it so that there's as few knobs as possible. Um, and, and anytime there is something, I make sure that it's as easy to understand as possible. Uh, so, uh, I have some examples here. Uh, so Avahi has uh, some handwritten man pages for the user and administrative commands that are somewhat useful. Um, you know, I don't want to make this a a, a bashing 
uh, contest or anything for documentation because everybody's doing the best they can. Um, but there's certain uh, functions and so forth that are not documented and other things where uh, it's not clear how you would use something. And um, that's that's just a function of, of the software and what it needs to do. But, um, you know, it's it's one of the challenges that that uh, we particularly face in open source is to get get the documentation uh, to a level that that um, um, really answers everybody's questions. Um, and Avahi also has uh, developer documentation generated with Doxygen, um, and that has some introductory and example text added into it um, through Doxygen comments in the in the code and and whatnot. And so it's relatively easy to to understand, uh, there are certain aspects of, of the API that are not explained. Um, uh, and some of the reference uh, documentation lacks um, the kind of details that you sometimes need when you're implementing things. Uh, and speaking from experience in using Avahi for the last 10 years. So um, it's, it's kind of an example of how you can you can uh, get some reasonable documentation using these tools, um, but you need to go a little bit further um, in order for some of the common developer questions to, to be answered. And uh, Avahi has a, a fairly long history on this. And so it's, it's one of those areas where I think it needs some improvement and, you know, Google Summer Code or Summer season of docs or whatever they have for their their program would probably be a a, a good target for that because it's it's such a, a key project uh, within open printing but just in general for for any kind of a network service um, so, so on on the side where I've actually had some some uh, some amount of, of uh, control. Uh, is cups and um, the documentation for cups has changed over the years. It started out as mainly uh, HTML files and and doing these large monolithic um, manuals. And over the years, has morphed into much smaller help documents, along with man pages and and the the markdown documentation that's bundled with the source code, um, uh, as well as automatically generated developer documentation and um, so you know kind of funny how we have now uh, on the for users and administrators you have uh, a bunch of small um, purpose or command driven um, documents you can read to for for the various commands in in cups and then the developer documentation which used to be a separate reference manual for each uh, type of of uh, API in libcups is now um, put into a single uh, programmer's manual that references all of the cups API with uh, several sections on how to use the different um, portions of of the cups library. Um, so in the case of of cups, I'm using uh, a program called Code Doc, which I wrote it used to be called MXML Doc, and bundled with the Mini XML uh, library that I've done. Um, but I got enough uh, uh, security bugs and and other assorted bugs uh, from people, uh, and you know, I get uh, uh, CVEs against uh, the Mini XML my library for things in. MXML doc, which was just this little side utility that I'd done using mini XML. And so I split that out. Now it's called code doc. Um, and um, it, it handles C and C++ um, reference documentation generation. So uh, those are a couple of those examples there. And I'm going to try to move this along so we have time for everything. So um, I have some references here for these tools. Um, as far as formats go for documentation, um, there's something called ASCII doc, 
um, which has seen some some usage in the standards uh, realm. Uh, restructured text, which is very common in uh, Linux kernel as well as other uh, situations, uh, particularly in Python uh, API documentation. Um, and you have the original Markdown um, and, and uh, the GitHub flavored Markdown, which is something GitHub uh, um, extended to do tables and, and so forth. And um, the GitHub flavored Markdown is actually what code doc supports. And um, it, it seems to give you enough control without it um, being too onerous. And you can generate um, EPUB, HTML, and man pages from, from the same source, which is kind of cool. So, um, so there's your source formats. And then there's tools. Uh, CodeDoc and MMD.util are both for me. Um, this project here, the MMD project, is a little library uh, for for um, parsing github flavored markdown and then you can use it to produce all sorts of stuff and so there's a little utility there if all you need is just to convert markdown to html or man pages it'll do that and then code doc is a little bigger and it handles the scanning of code and so forth and generating full documentation um, doxygen has been around for years and something called sphinx um, which is for python and it's uh, yeah, a, a way for you to be able to, to generate good reference documentation. Um, and if you write it, um, you can add the, uh, the introductory and example content to go with it. So you have a, 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 a usable programming manual for APIs. Um, so that's my stuff. I think that's all I have for slides. Um, Till, you want to take over? Yes. I take the presenter now for my uh, additional words. Uh, the, there are some other with the documentation which does not start with LPC. Yes, extra, yes. Yes, and I have also a little bit more to say about documentation on open printing. And naturally, what we want to do is to do to do more or less the same what is what Mike does with cups and his other projects and extend it to the to the rest of open printing like cups filters and so on. And we have also documentation on our static web pages it has started some years ago as when a former when some former google sum of code contributors uh, started to at first create a framework for our our website on github so all the static pages come from github and they are the markdown uh, system of GitHub to create web, web pages is used. And we have once, we were so lucky that we could run a Google Summer of Google Season of Docs uh, project. And this project was to describe how to create print application with Puppet. And this is available on our website and uses the GitHub framework for the pages. The same GitHub framework is, is uh, you probably already better know from my monthly news posts, where I every month write what happened in the in the last four weeks at Open Printing. Also, a form of documentation informing the the community about how Open Printing develops but less a user or admin documentation. And, but also an important documentation for, for distributions, for example, who use our work and integrate our work and, who need, and they need to know what's new. And then we got also recently a nice how-to because in Canonical, where I'm part of the desktop team, with my role in the desktop team, 
make printing just work simply. But there's also a WSL sub team and I work with them together and came to the idea why not running printer applications on WSL to, to rescue legacy printers? And a colleague of mine of the WSL team has written a nice how-to. And then, because many people do not really know what open printing has done and what they are doing, and we are also planning at Canonical to do some blog article. So this brought me to the case that I write something about the history of open printing, about what we have achieved and what we are currently doing. So if you go onto the About Us page on, on the open printing website, right near the top, there are three links which where you can see everything about open printing. And you get even links to form, to form uh, 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 Linux Plumbers micro conferences because we before this one we have done already three and you get the nice uh, Ubuntu desktop in Daba with Mike Sweet and me and you get the nice office hours with Avik Bazu and Monica and me and and two former uh, Google Summer of Code students and so you can learn a lot about open printing in general. And so this is also some part of documentation which we have. And now let's go to what we need as documentation. Unfortunately, we did not con we could not continue with the uh, Google season of docs. We are doing every year Google Sum of Code and get a lot of coding by that. Currently, I have seven students coding for us. But Google Sum of Code has changed. And you have to, to take the burden of paying the, of, 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 of doing, a, of, con of contracting the, the documentation right and paying him, him and Google gives you the money, but you have to do all the paperwork and bureaucracy, which you do not have to do in the Google Summer of Code. In the Google Summer of Code, Google is doing all this and you have simply a contributor and and he codes for you and and they code for you and and so you only mentor this contributor and do not need to deal with anything about uh, payment money and taxes and every and and things like that and so we continued google summer of code but after the google season of Do docs changed we have stopped there so we really need some volunteers writing documentation. This, there we are. We, this is really missing for us. And to make it easier with documentation and also to do the automatization, I've all already adopted the policy, the coding style policy of CUPS, which you find in the CUPS source code in in uh, the file developing.md or development.md. I don't remember the exact name, but now you have the idea and know which file it is. And there's a coding style description and a description how the function should be named. And after, after I've overtaken it, I've discovered when I prepared this presentation here, I've discovered that code again, that Mike's code again, that this when, with this policy, it automatically documents uh, the functions which belong to the API because part of the policy is the non-API functions which are in, in .h files because they are used by not, not only one but by several files of the library. They have to start their name with an underscore and the underscore files there the the head comment is is skipped for the documentation but for the file but for the functions which do not start their name with an under underscore mike's program grabs the head co comment as part of the documentation and then also thank you and so I have, uh, I've, on, I've already uh, ch uh, changed appropriately the CUPS filter source code. So I, for the documentation, one only would need to, to add missing head comments. And I've already switched over to the new uh, policy, the, 
the documentation of uh, CPD VLIPs and CPD backend cups, but still need to do it with uh, Lipapel retrofit. So this, this would be the preparation for the automatic documentation. And both for automatic and manual documentation, it would be great if, if I could find some volunteers helping me in writing all that. Any questions? Uh, so you standardized the function name in CAPS? What? You standardized the function name in CAPS? Yes, yes, in CAPS, the function names always start with, for lip, in lip CAPS, the function names always start with CAPS in lowercase letters. And then in camel case, the rest of the function name are after the word CAPS. And if this function is, is local only to the library, then uh, an underscore is added in the beginning. And this means this uh, for the code then to not document this function because it's internal, it's only used by that library and not in a part of the API. Is there... And I think the static functions, which are only local to, uh, to one source file, I think they are also not auto-documented. Mike, is this correct? Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, when it does this code scanning, any symbol that starts with an underscore or if it has static uh, is treated as private. And, ah, yes. uh, are there any work to standardize the uh, format of the code, like the white spaces and identation? So the white spaces and identation, I've also overtaken from the cut style, but they would not uh, influence the documentation. Yes. And uh, any other questions? Any questions uh, externally, remotely? So far, none. So documentation is even a less attractive subject than the rest of open printing is seen so. <laughs> what? <laughs> now the best talk is coming here. Now it's containerization. Still, I have a question. Uh, will we do some documentation about uh, debugging? Like, uh, I, I know that there is some de debugging uh, documentation from Ubuntu. Uh, we have some uh, Fedora wiki about, uh, about uh, debugging. So one of my plans uh, for during uh, you know, when I help with CUPS, it would be to uh, inter or ag ag aggregate those uh, debugging documentation into some uh, file uh, in a CUPS project. Yes, yes, that is a really great idea. There's a lot of documentation also in Debian. And I can and I can talk with a guy from Debian who voluntarily wrote together all this documentation about debugging printing, whether he would like to copy and upload this documentation into open printing so that we have this upstream and then we can add to this documentation also also debugging for other distros for example rpm based distros and and so on to get a better uh, repository of debugging also we must start we must also add the debugging not only of rpm and debian based but also on snap and docker based and print applications so it would be a nice base if we start with a, with a lots of debian documentation and add the red hat and uh, ubuntu what we have also And perhaps the Debian guy uh, will help a lot on that because he has already written so much. So that now it's more copying everything together and putting it all on the open printing into the open printing website. 
Okay, and Thank it is six. Yes, yes. Now we get to the next, next and last session. I will now. Yes, yes, yes. I need. I need now to do a short introduction to it before I pass over to uh, uh, Valentine. So. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, so that while I'm doing this one, yeah. while I'm doing this one, uh, you can give the microphone to Valentine. Yes, yes. Give that to him. And you can that one on. Yeah, this one right. Okay, good. So, so I will start my part. This I will start my part is the first one this time. We are now talking about containerization, sandboxing containerization. And what we are very well already in is, is, is SNAP. We have nicely integrated uh, uh, cups into the SNAP e ecosystem and even uh, changed a little bit the design of SnapD to integrate very well. We have snapped all the print applications, but there are there are some problems. There are many snap deniers who do not like to use snap and main reasons are that there's only one snap store and no alternative to, to, to the snap store. And another important reason is why we have snap deniers is that when Ubuntu 22.04 came out, it was the first version which by default delivered Firefox as a snap. And this Firefox started up very slowly and users complained. At Ubuntu, my colleagues in the desktop team have, have worked a lot the first two months or so. One had only discussion about Firefox and making it faster in the desktop team. And they have done a lot of things. There were also, it were also three blog articles of our product manager of the desktop team. And and we and, and, and we really made it much, much better. So it's not really such a problem anymore. And the, but the other problem, which is perhaps also a real problem and not only snap deniers, is that the snap should be distribution independent, but the snap support of different distribution is very different. Once snap, it all only works on system D based distros. And the other thing is that the main security uh, facility of SNAP, the main encapsulation of SNAP is done by App Armor. But there are distributions, especially Red Hat and derivatives, which use SE Linux, another security framework. And one cannot use the, the two security frameworks at once. This is some problem of the kernel. I think the, they try to fix it, but it's not yet fixed. And so the, the Fedora uh, SE Linux based distros are somewhat in disadvantage concerning Snap. And therefore already back in April, when we had the Linux application sim summit 2022, I was thinking about alternatives about Snap. You, you see my news post February, in, uh, March, April, I discussed uh, containerization, distribution, independent packaging, because we, we, we searched for alternatives. And I've seen that there are, and I found out that there are many things like, for example, Flatpak. I cannot use it. Flatpak is only for GUI applications because the communication to the outside is not by interfaces, which are more or less up armor exceptions, but it is by the portals, which are things like common, open, uh, safe S and print dialogues. And so the dialogue is run by the desktop, can access the user's files and communicates with, uh, is connected by Dbus with the application itself. And so the application has the con connection to the outside. This 
does not work with system demons, demons like cups and print applications. And then we have app image. It has no security concept at all. And so I ended up with some nice hallway sessions on the Linux application summit, especially with Robert McQueen, but also a lot with Heather Ellsworth from Canonical. And that one should try OCI containers. So you know Docker and so. And this, this is also container format. It's more used in the server world. It's not that consumer friendly as Snap, but it works on more systems. You can have some distros which, which are designed more for using desktop applications as flat packs and not using Snap, where you can, for example, add system daemons by uh, OCI containers. And there, and so Robert McQueen suggested me to create an official CUPS OCI container is there are many cups containers in the Docker Hub, he showed me, and probably also in the Vox, which are third party. And there should be one official of open printing. And this is subject of this session. And, and so you, you can start this container using things like, like Docker or Podman. And you can uh, run and many and and you uh, and one thing is that there is something like a system deportable service with which one can perhaps even manage also the, the daemon get started and so. And now I have a special guest last minute. We I knew him only since last week. He works at Canonical. Valentin Vienno, he's the product manager for Rocks and containerization. And he's also very much working on optimizing containers by reducing the operating system components in the containers. You know, a container contains not only the application, but also all its libraries, its dependencies, and also some operating system container com components. And for security and for, redu for reducing resource consumption. And so he will give also some words about that. Yeah, you have a microphone. I will switch the slides now.